We're still three months out from Jonathan Smith coaching his first game at Michigan State, but what have we already learned about him and how he's going to run things here in East Lansing? Well, let's find out. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is $150 with any winning $5 bet. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked On Spartans listeners, thank you all so much for tuning in to Locked On Spartans. Your team in green and white five days a week. Please rate, review, subscribe. Comment below what you have learned so far this offseason about Michigan State or Jonathan Smith or maybe just life in general. Maybe we did a lot of personal growing in the last few months. Nevertheless, hit us up in the comments below or LockedOnSpartans at gmail.com. All right, so on today's show, for the first few segments here, we're going to talk about what we've learned under Jonathan Smith. And I reached out on Twitter. I said, hey, gang, this is going to kick off the show tomorrow. What have you out there learned about Jonathan Smith or about Michigan State or the new chapter of this new era of Spartan football, whatever it is? So the first segment, we're going to go through my observations with your commentary. And then after that, we're going to go through your observations with my commentary. So everyone get your notebooks, your pens out. We're going to be taking some good old-fashioned notes here because, yeah, we've learned a lot. However, we're going to kick this off with this because, again, I asked, hey, what, did you, what have you guys learned? And Izzo for Prez wrote in, we haven't learned anything yet. Need to see the product on the field first. <laughs> well, there you are on, good sir. Uh, because even with just, you know, the boring stuff, not the, the stuff you don't see on TV, the stuff you won't see every Saturdays or potentially a Friday or two this upcoming fall, there's still behind the scenes work that makes the magic on Saturdays that we have already learned about. And this is the first thing that I have learned so far, even for a guy as guarded as Jonathan Smith. It's not like he's out there in front of the media. He's not this great marketing whiz. He gets his work done in other ways, but the few nuggets of knowledge we have picked up like him being a really savvy general manager is the number one lesson that we have learned so far here in East Lines. Now, of course it takes support staff to really help out what he is doing behind the scenes with the roster management, with the transfer portal and recruiting. We're talking guys like Cody Cox, Dan Vanderwright, Cole Moore, and Michael Doctor. Those are guys that he pulled over from Oregon State to run his organization here. And I got to say, organization, organized, yeah, that is one way I would describe the Jonathan Smith tenure so far here in East Lansing. First and foremost, like the ads for this team have been smart. Right, we're talking the guys that they've added in the transfer portal, guys that are instant impact, the obvious guys that they knew, right? Like Aiden Childs, okay? Jack Valling, the tight end, Tanner Miller, the interior offensive line. But also, before spring practice even opens up here, he was able to identify that, okay, coverage at the linebacker position is an issue. He went ahead and got one of the best coverage linebackers out there in Wayne Matthews out of Old Dominion. Okay, well, this offensive line needs some help, especially in the interior. I'm going to go ahead, dip down to Holy Cross, and get Luke Newman before any spring practice even begins. He was able to identify holes right off the bat before the pads were even put on here and already start attacking those. Now, after 15 practice sessions, after that nice little spring showcase we all saw on Big Ten Network, he gets a better idea of, okay, what is this team all about? Where are the needs? And not just for now. We're not just talking guys like Ed Woods, right? We're not just talking guys like Kayron Lynch-Adams, the, the running back that they added, but also for the future. Guys, I, like I sound like a broken record right now, especially if you've been listening to the show the last week or two, but there have been some holes left in the roster, not just for this year. This year you feel okay about all your starters, but the defensive line, Sure was going to look like an empty room after this year. The linebacker room, that's going to look pretty empty here in a little bit. He's gotten future players there, whether it be Samaj Bridgman for the linebackers or Marcellus Polian for the linebackers or Ruquan Buckley, Jalen Satchel, or Big Worm Ben Roberts for the defensive line. It's been a good blind of, okay, where do I absolutely need instant impact right now? Cornerback was one. Of course, quarterback was the other one. But all around the field, he's added instant impact guys as well as planning for the future. So that is just some good general managing. And it's just how structured and how purposeful everything is, guys. Like, for example, Jaden Mangum, okay, that's your starting safety. He leaves for the portal. 
No less than, God, it felt like four hours after that news broke, Nikai Martinez out of Central Florida gets a Michigan State offer. Okay, Brandon Lane, defensive lineman that Michigan State had a commitment from, but that was a mutual parting of ways. Right after that, all right, well, Jalen Satchel, you're on the horn. You're the next one up. It is as if they just have a giant board in their offices with just lists of guys at a position power ranking them, and they're just going, bow. Just down one at a time. Okay, who's the next guy? Who's the next guy? Oh, we just had this guy leave at our position. Okay, let's go to that board, see who's available up there. And they do quick work. Again, yes, it's Jonathan Smith heading this thing, but it's the support staff, too, that is making this all happen. And what I like, too, guys, is that he drew a line with the games that were played, kind of, right? Now, whether it was not bad faith or whether it was circumstances that could not have been seen by anyone. And I'm talking about those guys that left for the portal in the winter. Michigan State fighting to get them back, and then what's that? Oh, in the spring, you guys are entering the portal again to get another pay increase from another school? Jonathan Smith, based on what I know, he was holding firm. He wasn't going to give them another raise, and I think that's good because you don't want to set that precedent with other players moving forward. Here, sure, you want to dip in the portal for the winter, see what kind of numbers out there, and come back, and we'll see if we, we can match it. Fine. If you want to do that stunt like eight weeks after <laughs> the first time you did it, no, we're not going to stand for that here. We're going to have guys that want to be here. So it's a combination of, well, just being smart with your money, you know, paying a good amount for the, a player that matches that amount and also establishing a culture here in East Lansing. Juicy J, great name, uh, on Twitter wrote in, they're not afraid to play hardball with the kids when it comes to NIL, playing time, et cetera, and they're content to let guys walk if they don't truly want to be here and earn it, trying to reestablish a Spartan culture that D'Antonio built up. So very well said, Juicy J. Now, number two, what we have learned so far in this offseason from Jonathan Smith is how he lays the foundation for a recruiting class, or at least a very early look at what his strategy is. Starting with a quarterback right off the bat that you love, that you want to lock down early, like Leo Hannon, the three-star quarterback, who I think is going to grow into a four-star quarterback at some point this year, but that's a future discussion. You get him committed early. That is a great cornerstone for a class. And man, quarterback recruiting, yeah, that can get squirrely at times. You want to be connected to a kid as early as possible, especially if you like him. So that was some savvy work by Jonathan Smith. And it's also getting those what I call bedrock guys in your class. We're talking guys that are ranked 400 to 800 in the class. Sure, they'll only have three stars by their name. And, you know, there's not a lot of sex appeal around like a three-star rank. And it's like, okay, yeah, cool. Like, there's a lot of those out there. But from the 400 to 800 range is where classes, like here at Michigan State, especially for where the Spartans are right now, that is what makes a class whole. Now, the example that we have used that, that is quite the contrary is what we saw with the last staff of putting too much focus on those top 400 guys. You're getting their visits. You're getting them on unofficials, officials. You're on their top fours, and then all of a sudden, well, crap. Uh, they actually um, hmm, didn't come here, and oh, no, those guys that are ranked 400 through 800, we never had on campus over the summer, and we've never even shook their hands. It's time to real make up some ground here. So that is what Jonathan Smith is starting with right now. He's starting with those guys like Damari Malone, Chase Clarizzo, Charles White, Emmett Bork. Those guys are all ranked in the top 800. Actually, Emmett Bork is outside the top 800, but with his offer sheet, again, and his build at six foot six coming into his senior year, you can think that that will rise in the top 800s. But nevertheless, you're getting your foundational guys that are also in state, also regional, just like Damari Malone, Charles White, Chase, Jace Clarizzo. Those are all in state guys. So, Hopefully, and I know I'm dating myself here because holy crap, you hope that this class could be like shades of a 2011 class, which I can't believe is, oh my God, 13 years ago. Good God, I'm going to go <laughs> gravesite shopping after this one. My goodness gracious. Regardless, let me just refresh everyone what happened back then. They landed a guy by the name of Connor Cook, a middling three-star quarterback very early in the cycle in April before signing day. Kind of like Michigan State just did with Leo Hannon, okay? You have your cornerstone quarterback right there. And then, well, you add your 400 through 800 ranked guys. Joel Heath, R.J. Williamson, Tawan Jones, Jack Allen, Ed Davis, Darian Harris, Fo Finotti, Shalik Calhoun was – he was in the 900s, and even Trey Wayne was, was outside the top 1,000s. But still, those are all guys that were core starters of great teams. 
Now, of course, you still need your high floor guys, like your four stars, like your Lawrence Thomases, for example, or in the year after they got Aaron Burbridge and Demetrius Cox, those were two four stars, but still you're starting with the foundation that you feel comfortable with. They feel comfortable with you. So instead of at the end of swinging and missing on all your four stars, and you're going into November with a 10 person class and you're crapping yourself thinking, uh Oh, kind of screwed the pooch there. Who else is still out there? You already have those kids in your class and you can still have room for the four stars of the world, of course. So Guys, that's just two lessons. I got a third one, and then we're going to get to your thoughts here in a hot second. But first, you need to talk your ears off about Yahoo Finance. Folks, this is a sponsor, by the way. Now, it is our good friend, Yahoo Finance. So shout out to them. And let's get straight to the point, actually. You want to grow your portfolio to deal with the rising cost of inflation, to pay off your debt or your mortgage, pretty much anything standing in the way of you and financial freedom, right? Well, with Yahoo Finance, you can get access to the news, data and tools that you need in order to help you reach that financial freedom. When it comes to your financial future, I, I get it. You think you've done it all. You've saved, you've researched, but hey, Yahoo Finance is here to help you even further. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. And that's whether you're a seasoned investor or just looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance is here to give you all the tools and data in one place. With a community of over 90 million users each month, the real strength is helping you on your way to financial success. So for comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor. We're talking yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination. That is yahoofinance.com. One more time, guys, yahoofinance.com. All right, so I got a third lesson that we've already learned here in this offseason, in this very short tenure so far for Jonathan Smith and company. And this third lesson actually talks about that company we are talking about. And the third lesson is, well, Coach Meat is more than just a fun name. Of course, we talk about Demetrius Martin. And then Blue Adams is more than another guy with a fun name and just a guy that wears old school hats. No, these guys have already shown recruiting chops, right? I mean, we've seen it in the transfer portal. Guys like Nikai Martinez, all right, a guy that started every game for UCF last year. Guys like Ed Woods, who was going to start for Arizona State this year. Guys like Legend Cavazos, who was going to start or at least be the first guy off the bench for the Tar Heels down in North Carolina. And then Jeremiah Hughes, LSU cornerback, who played every game as a freshman last year. Like Those are some good, solid pickups. And that's not even to mention Big Worm. That's, that's not even a position group that uh, Coach Meat coaches. But with the connection from Oregon, who we got Big Worm from, like this is a savvy, savvy recruiter right here. So, hey, not only do we bring him home to his alma mater, hey, welcome back to East Lansing, Coach Me, but yeah, he's brought the recruiting goods with him. Actually, speaking of recruiting in the defensive secondary, Chris McCorkle out of Florida, he is committed to the Indiana Hoosiers. He's a four-star. He's visiting in June right now. So, Danny on Twitter agrees with us. Coach Meat is the GOAT closer we've been waiting for on the recruiting trail. He will be the first to land us a five-star recruit in years. Yee-yee. Now, if you're not on Twitter, uh, you don't know what yee-yee even means. You just think Danny sounds crazy. But that's what Coach Meat is tweeting out anytime they get a commit, which has been quite a bit the last two weeks here. All right, so those are my thoughts. All right, just how Jonathan Smith structures things very cleanly, very organized. The recruiting, and then, well, yeah, you got some assistants that are also some pretty good recruiters so far in their early time here at MSU. Now, what do you guys think? What have you guys all learned out there? We're going to start with James here, and he writes, Scheme matters more than most people think in both sides of the ball. And also, we have great community of fans and football families. Just wanted to shout out all the players and their families. Hope everyone is loving their time in East Lansing. Absolutely. Second, I, I absolutely second that. So. James, when it comes to the scheme and everything, guys, if you missed yesterday's chat with Al Karsten, uh, that guy is a football whiz. That was a sensational chat. And I got to say, like, we have a lot of great guests on the show. He might have just taken first place for, like, most requested guests to come back. Like, that's how good that chat was yesterday. But he talked about scheme. He talked about a lot of play action. He talked about what they do with the tight end, a lot of window dressing before the snap. Like, that is all going to be new here. And just like we talked about on yesterday's show, too, for the first time in a while, guys, uh, the offense might be unpredictable before the snap. I know it's not just going to be me and you sitting on the couch knowing that an inside zone handoff on second and eight is coming for a gain of one yard. Like, no, they actually keep the defense guessing. Now, 
As far as the defense goes in that scheme, uh, guys, I'm not going to go X's and O's here or do any analysis. Uh, it just it, it can't get any worse, right? Uh, the only way to go is up under Joe Rossi, so uh, we do have that to look forward to. Now, Marianne writes in, Coach Smith and the staff work quietly. They don't tip their hand and get work done. Absolutely love their business-like approach. That is spot on. They are very, very good at playing things close to the vest here. And it's also kind of reflected by the kind of kids they have recruited so far, right? I mean, these are kids that didn't have a lot of drama in their commitment. I, heck, most of these five commits so far, they didn't even have like a top four list on Twitter. And that's not saying that anyone that you know tweets out a top four list is bad or just doing it for the clout. Like, God, Lord knows if I was a, even a, a two-star athlete in high school, oh my God, I'd be making a mess of my recruitment. I would let everyone know every school that I've been in contact with. Nevertheless, the guys that have committed so far, no nonsense, all business, kind of just like how Jonathan Smith and company run their thing. Now, is it going to be like that forever? Like, are they going to go their entire time in East Lansing with no decommits or anything like that? Like, no, of course not. Like, that's just the world of recruiting. But still, it seems less about the flash, less about just blindly going after stars and going for guys that fit your system and fit your culture. Again, like, I, so, there are some times – I thought that, hey, culture is just like a lazy cliche thrown around and that really doesn't mean a lot in football. I think we've learned uh, <laughs> the hard way that culture can maybe actually impact what goes on a football field. LT Bishop, Lieutenant Bishop, he writes in two thoughts through player comments throughout the spring, how big of a con job this last coaching staff was and defensive player comments most notably. Now he's talking about whenever the players spoke about the last staff and they were all very good at talking about that. They were all buttoned up. No one just lashed out and gave their maybe true thoughts about what happened last tenure. But one word that stuck out to me, and this was Chris Bogle, he said static. He said static, I think it was once or twice in his. And like that was just a great way to sum up kind of the defense of last year. Um, now, Lieutenant Bishop also writes in, additionally, I love how great of an athletic director Alan Haller is and fully trust him in replacing Izzo the next few years. Now, if you guys want a complete tangent right now off of football, uh, yeah, I'll just spend a, a quick second on this. This is obviously a bigger discussion for the future, but you know what? Like, even before Kentucky and Calipari split ways, I kind of thought that it'd be Izzo naming his guy and that it would be an in-house guy, someone very familiar with the system, a name that we all know, whether it's a current assistant coach or a former one. I always thought that was going to be the case, but on the other hand, I've always held out hope that, hey, maybe a guy like Scott Drew – could be a strong candidate here, but man, I, not only what we've learned from Alan Haller and Tom Izzo and just how that's all going to work out. I, we learned a lot about Izzo's successor with what happened at Kentucky and how hard it is to pry guys away from their jobs. Like, for example, well, Scott Drew, he was offered the Kentucky job from Baylor and he's staying in Waco. Guys, I know we all love Michigan State. I think the world of Michigan State basketball, sure, we're a blue blood. Kentucky is still a much higher status than Michigan State, and if he isn't jumping at that job, then, oh, man, that's going to be hard to pry some guys away. Guys like Nate Oates, for example, too, who also turned down the Kentucky job. So I think it will be in-house, but nevertheless, let's get back on the football train right here. I couldn't just let that comment go by without adding my two cents on basketball. Drew writes in, addressing the past secondary issues head-on, creating a grinded-out culture, and Childs DeMarsh will feed families for over the next two to three years. That's right. Drew was physically, emotionally, and spiritually moved by what we all saw on Big Ten Network on April 20th with Nick Marsh absolutely looking like a day-one starter, even as a true freshman. And guys... That's what I'm talking about, and that's what a lot of you know. I don't like you know mean to act like I'm giving everyone a lecture right now, but that's what I that's what I'm talking about when I say like you do need four stars in some classes. Now at Michigan State, does it have to be 15 in the same class? Like no, I I wouldn't say no to that, but like no, you can get away with just a few for now, especially in the stature that Michigan State's in right now. But that's why you need four star guys, guys with high floors. Marsh might not even start this year. But it is inevitable that he will make an impact on the field right off the bat. And he's only going to grow throughout his career. Or, guys, like last year, how about a true freshman on the defensive side of the ball? How about Jordan Hall? Like, that, that is an important guy. I know that it is possible to start as a three-star freshman, but it just doesn't happen as much as it does with four-stars. And I know that all four-stars don't pan out. They don't always hit their ceiling. 
But man, it's a way higher hit rate than it is for three stars. So yes, like that is why, hey guys, I'm with you. You do need three stars. You got to develop them. You need guys that fit you, you know? Hopefully you can develop them into their high ceiling, even as a three-star. But man, it, it is important to have four-star talent on a roster too. All right, guys, we got some more lessons that we got to go through. And then might talk about Friday games here at the very end. But first, you need to talk your ears off about Fan Duel Sportsbook, America's number one sports book. What a great time of year to get in on the action, too. We're talking NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, MLB is in full swing. Go ahead and bet over on the Tigers runs. One out of every 15 days, they actually want to hit that. And then, hey, golf season two. I am always crawling to FanDuel to get my golf wagers in. And if you're a new customer over at FanDuel, well, it gets even better for you because new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, so much more. Or, guys, they have all sorts of college football futures out there right now. Let's say you're feeling spicy about our Michigan State Spartans. Jonathan Smith, Aiden Childs, Jack Velling, Montori Foster. The, the boys are going to hit the ground running immediately. We'll go ahead. 170 to 1 odds on FanDuel to win the Big Ten Championship game. That's $1. Cash out $170. Do it right now over at FanDuel if you're feeling good about Michigan State. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. It's FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right. Now we've got, uh, got a few more lessons to get to here. Jack writes in, this football staff seems legit. On the contrary, Mel and his crew may have been the biggest frauds in history. Interested to see how everything translates to the field this fall. Yeah, in-game coaching for the last regime was uh, one thing, right? We actually spent a little bit the other day on a segment of uh, greatest in-game blunders. And when we started to really worry that uh, things might not be working out here, even for in-game coaching, but off the field, yes, I'm not even going to talk about the, the biggest story that we all know by now, but it was the recruiting was another issue too. And don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not going to circle back and just absolutely erase everything I've said about going after four and five stars. Like, I love that Michigan State was aggressive with the four star and the five star talent they had on campus under Mel Tucker, especially the time they did it, right, guys? Right after the Peach Bowl, you just won double digit games. Everyone's feeling great. My God, it is stars galore. The issue that is uh, abundantly clear by now is that, well, just like we already talked about, you didn't even think of your plan B, guys. You like you didn't even consider that these four stars might be going elsewhere, might be going down south, SEC programs, big money programs. Like So when they all, I shouldn't say all, when most of them, a much higher percentage of what you thought was committing elsewhere, yeah, you, you're sitting down at the Thanksgiving table in 2023 Saying, uh, hey, don't we have less than a month till signing day? And there's only, what's that, 11 kids? 11 kids in our class right now? Um, okay, should we call some other, like, three stars that we've never met before and see if they want to come play at Michigan State? And that's how we kind of tidy our class up? Well, it's kind of what happened. That's how you sign a kid, or, or that's how you sign a class with under 20 kids in 2023. So, look, whether it was just the lack of plan B because they didn't even think that they would have to go to that, or... They thought that they were very close with a lot of these four-star kids when in reality they weren't even on the radar despite being on top three or top five graphics. Like, I, I don't know what the issue was there. Nevertheless, it didn't work out, and it really did seem like there was some incompetency there. Caleb writes in. Now, this is nice. Now, this is like a personal story here. Caleb writes in, we've catered lunch for this uh, for this team several times during the spring. The entire vibe in the building is different with the new staff. The players seem more engaged. The staff is a lot more personable, and the level of chemistry is noticeably higher. So there we go. A nice little first-person view from Caleb on what he has learned so far this offseason. Get a job. That's their name on Twitter. I'm not telling you out there to get a job, but get a job, writes in. Might be an isolated experience, but every time I walk by the new football building, I can't help but to notice the large amount of staff still has Oregon plates on their cars. <laughs> Don't know if that's what you're looking for, but that's what I learned. Now, look, uh, here's a real good peek behind the curtain. I'm in the basement right now. On my way to the basement, I pass a pile of crap that has been at the foot of our stairs for maybe probably going on two months, maybe even three months at this point. And I always say I'm going to get around to it. 
I'm sure that's how the coaching staff views their license plates. They still have Oregon on it. I'm sure that's a thing. It's like, and you know what? When I have a day freed up, I'll just get around to it maybe. And then, well, it's either one or two things. The day is never free up. Or, hey, a day actually finally frees up and they want to relax and not spend their life at the Secretary of State building. So I can't fault the staff too much. As a procrastinator and a very forgetful person myself, I get it. But, uh, yeah, so that is a good observation right there. And the last one that we're going to get to here, this is from Tony's second Hall of Fame plaque writes in my happiness each fall is in good hands how about that for some optimism even before the season kicks off he's already feeling great about where things are headed and it's, I, again so am i love the staff hire uh, of jonathan smith love what he's been doing with his staff too so yeah a lot of good lessons to be learned um and guys again if we missed any write them below or locked on sparns at gmail.com now we're going to end this because with i'm sorry i should say the topic before I just keep going. We're going to end this with talking about games potentially being played on Friday. And we're not talking about the Labor Day game, right, guys? We're talking about in-season games because, well, we're coming up in that time of year eventually. I don't know the hard date, but it feels like game times are going to start coming out. There's been a few that have trickled out there, like your big marquee games. But by and large, like a, a lot of us don't know when MSU is playing or their other teams are playing. And, guys, I don't know if you remember this a few months ago, but Big Ten, Big 12, and Mountain West – struck a deal with Fox that is going to have one primetime game each Friday this season. Again, Big Ten, Big 12, Mountain West. That, of course, could impact Michigan State. Now, last year, Illinois and Nebraska, their game got moved to a Friday night. That announcement was made in late April. We are currently in late May, so I think it's going to be any time now where we could learn some game time, some fates of which games get moved to Friday. But here are my thoughts, just on the off chance Michigan State does get moved to a Friday night game. This is called getting ahead of a story right now. Um, look, it's cool. Like, uh, like Friday night games for college football, they're cool. Until it happens to your team, I think. Um, it's one of those things where, hey, uh, if Boston College and Virginia Tech are playing on a random Friday night, Look, right now, I don't really go to a lot of high school football games, but I do love crashing on the couch. I do love football. Of course I'm going to watch that game. Of course I'm going to bet on it. Of course I'm going to crack open a cold beer and start my weekend with some football. This is great. This is awesome. Man, what, what's that? Now my, my team has to do this now? Yeah, okay, like that's that's a little bit of a different situation. Um, again, we're not talking about the Friday game before Labor Day. Like that one should be on Friday. That would be a great one but it's every other Saturday. Just like, you know, the nice tradition that we all know and love about college football. Now the cons, well, hey, if you're, you know, a big tailgater, like that probably isn't the most fun. There might be even be shorter hours since that would be a school day for Michigan State and they do have rules around that. Or let's say that, well, you got a nine to five job. You live about an hour or two away from campus. You can't get there till seven. Well, that's only a half hour before kickoff. Well, your tailgating is eliminated if you can't get the day off of work or of anything else going on that Friday. Uh, it's a shorter week for the players by a day, but still, like if I can nitpick, like that is a shorter week to get ready and heal their bodies from the last game. It's also, well, just the feeling of getting bullied out of another tradition, and it's another step further away from the college football DNA that we all know and love, if there is any of that DNA left. But nevertheless, that's another thing just being kind of torn away from us here. And Guys, uh, if you're a high school football purist, yes, that of course hurts because, well, if you want to go catch your local high school game, well, now you're conflicted. You're in a pickle, right? But it also hurts recruiting because, well, uh, yeah, when do high schools play their games? And when do good high school prospects like to visit college campuses? Oh, that's right, on game days. If both are happening at the same time, even if it is just one week a year, well, that's not going to help things. That hurts more than it helps. But the pros – the pros, and we're not going to be all negative about this, is, hey, that's some spotlight right there, right? Instead of having a random game against, let's call it the Michigan State Rutgers game or the Michigan State Purdue game gets buried on Big Ten Network at noon on a Saturday, sure, we will watch. Spartan fans will watch. No question about that. But if you want eyeballs on your program, eyeballs on what Jonathan Smith is doing and his vision for the future, maybe as an isolated game on a Friday isn't the worst idea, okay? I know we really saw the uh, kind of, well, reverse of that last year. MSU had a lot of primetime games, right? Against Iowa, against Ohio State, against Michigan, against Penn State. That's when you didn't want to be on TV in front of the whole nation. But, hey, new chapter, fresh regime, 
Maybe you could showcase that as an isolated game. And guys, also to the other pro, I, point blank, period. Night games are just fun. Like, it, it is sweet. I mean, under the lights, the black jerseys are popping or the green jerseys, whatever they want to wear that day. So, again, we will see. I know there are some rumors fluttering out there that Michigan State could be landing one of these Friday games. But we won't fully hit the panic button or the full-on gripe button until it actually happens. All right, guys. Until next time, tomorrow we will be joined by Maxwell Klitsky, great friend of the program. We're going to be going position group by position group on the defense and deciding, well, did they get better, worse, or stay the same over this offseason? But until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Love you all. Go Green.